We now move on to the layers outside the membrane. As most microbes live in dilute environments, a cell wall is important for survival. Without a cell wall, the cell would burst. The cell wall helps keep the membrane and the rest of the cell together. So why would a cell explode if it wasn't for the cell wall? Osmosis is the reason. If you put a semi-permeable membrane between two solutions, since the solutes cannot balance out their concentrations, water will try to diffuse to balance them out. An open system such as this beaker will cause more liquid to be on the right side so that the concentrations of solutes is the same. In a cell, that is not possible and pressure builds up as the water tries to force its way inside. The cell wall counters this pressure and keeps the cell together. Most bacterial cells can be divided into one of two groups, gram-negative or gram-positive. This is based upon the cell's staining properties, which in turn is attributed to major structural differences in their cell walls. We are going to spend considerable time talking about these two types because they are so common. We will begin talking about bacterial cell wall structure by describing peptidoglycan, a polymer present in both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. It is unique to bacteria. Peptidoglycan contains a backbone made from N-acetylglucosamine, also abbreviated as NAG or G in this figure, and N-acetylmuramic acid, NAM or M. This backbone is linked by beta-1,4 linkages, which are covalent bonds. Hanging off of each NAM monomer is a cross bridge made from amino acids. Each backbone is stitched to the structure by linking the cross bridges from different strands to make a mesh. The result of the cross linking is a mesh that surrounds a microorganism. Note that this is not a permeability barrier. The name of the molecule comes from its composition. Peptido for the peptide cross bridges and glycan for the sugars in the backbone. When intact, peptidoglycan is a strong structure capable of withstanding up to 25 pounds per square inch of turgor pressure. Peptidoglycan is different in various species. In gram-negative bacteria, there is a direct link between the peptides. In gram-positive bacteria, there is an amino acid interbridge. For example, in Staphylococcus aureus, the interbridge is made up of glycines. Note that the amino acids in the interbridge are slightly different between the two species. Note how two of the amino acids in the peptidoglycan are unique, D-alanine and m diaminopimelic acid. DAP is unique to bacteria. D-alanine is the opposite chiral form of the typical L-alanine that's used in proteins. It won't surprise you to find out that the synthesis of peptidoglycan is complex, as shown in this figure. The synthesis of monomers occurs in the cytoplasm. After the creation of a NAM-NAG monomer, it flips to the outside of the membrane. Here, transglycolases build the glycan backbone, and transpeptidases make links between the backbone. Cell wall synthesis is a target of many antibiotics. Since we don't synthesize the cell wall, humans do not have any of the enzymes of the pathway. The figure lists several antibiotics and where they have their effect. Note especially the activity of penicillin. Penicillins inhibit the transpeptidation reaction and prevent the cell wall from forming. As part of your immune system, we synthesize lysozyme. This enzyme attacks the link between NAM and NAG, breaking it apart. If enough of these bonds are broken, it will kill the bacterium. Lysozyme is present in tears, saliva, milk, and mucus, and is a very effective defense against bacteria. As part of this course, I expect you to be able to recognize chemical structures. For example, I think it would be fair game for you to be able to identify the structure of peptidoglycan. To give you some practice, try to identify this structure. The correct answer is a carbohydrate or sugar. By the way, this is N-acetylglucosamine. While both gram-positive and gram-negative cells have peptidoglycan, the rest of their cell wall structure is very different. The gram-positive cell is mostly peptidoglycan. It has dozens of layers of peptidoglycan polymer stacked into a thick mesh. 
Tychoic acid and lipotychoic acid hold these layers together with the latter anchoring peptidoglycan to the cytoplasmic membrane. The peptidoglycan will also have proteins embedded within it. The gram-negative cell wall structure is more complex. It has a thin layer of peptidoglycan, and outside of this is a second lipid bilayer, the outer membrane. There are several unique features of the outer membrane. The outer membrane is anchored to the peptidoglycan by a lipoprotein. It will be covalently bound to a cross bridge that also then links to the outer membrane. Another feature of the outer membrane is lipopolysaccharide. LPS is anchored to the membrane by lipid A. This lipid is composed of two NAG groups with fatty acids in place of the hydrogens of the hydroxyl groups. They then anchor that to the membrane. Linked to the NAG is a core oligosaccharide that can be vary a bit between species. This core often contains a sugar called KDO, keto deoxyoctanoate, and is uniquely found in LPS. Beyond this is the O polysaccharide that varies tremendously, even within a species. Pathogens will alter their O polysaccharide to hide from the immune system. Your immune system reacts to the presence of LPS, since this is unique to bacteria and marshals an immune response against it. If you are exposed to too much LPS, your immune system will react so strongly that it can kill you. Thus, LPS is also known as endotoxin. The outer membrane is not a permeability barrier because it contains porins. These proteins provide pores through the membrane that many molecules can pass through. You can see their unique structure in the top view of a porin. Some porins are specific and will only allow certain molecules through, while others are nonspecific. While gram-positive and gram-negative cell wall structure is common in bacteria, there are, of course, exceptions. Some bacteria don't have peptidoglycan, but do have other parts of the cell wall structure. Some gram-negatives, for example, spirochetes, don't have LPS in their outer membrane. Mycoplasma lack a cell wall altogether. Finally, mycobacteria have a unique cell wall structure shown at right. While it somewhat resembles a gram-positive cell wall, there is an entire waxy layer beyond the peptidoglycan. Mycoplasma are a unique example. They lost their ability to make cell walls and their cells are pleomorphic, meaning they have many shapes. Due to this, you can see the pictures here. These bacteria always live inside a host cell and thus are in an isotonic environment that puts no pressure on their cytoplasmic membranes. They do have tougher membranes that are fortified with host-derived sterols. There are pathogenic species such as Mycoplasma genitalium and Mycoplasma pneumoniae. Commensal harmless species are also common. Let's check your understanding. Which of the following is found both in gram-positive and gram-negative cell walls? Second, I would also like you to take a minute to write 20 to 30 words that describe the mode of action of lysozyme. Then, write another 20 to 30 words that describe the action of penicillin. After you have finished, compare the targets of the two methods. Which requires growth to be effective? Are both potentially lethal to the bacteria? The correct answer to the first question is NAG, which is found in peptidoglycan. And if you're unsure about your answer to the second question, go back and look at slides 50 and 51. We finish up bacterial structure by looking at structures that are outside the cell wall. Capsules are polymers that encircle the cell. The names capsule polysaccharide, extracellular polysaccharide, glycocalyx, slime capsule, K-antigen, cell surface glycoconjugate are other names given to this same layer. Capsules hydrate the cell, protect it from the elements and predators, and help it to stick to surfaces. For example, the capsule of Streptococcus pyogenes helps it adhere to tonsil cells. Polysaccharides are not the only type of capsule. For example, Bacillus anthracis and some other firmicutes produce capsules made of the amino acid glutamate. If the bacterium loses the ability to make this capsule, it is no longer pathogenic, so it is clear as it is important in its pathogenesis. Outside the cell wall, other surface layers are common. These will often consist of glycoproteins, proteins that are decorated with sugars, that link together and form a repeating matrix that covers the surface. 
These proteins serve as another protective layer to the cell. Just for fun, have you ever heard of xanthan gum? I bet you have consumed some of it. It is produced by Xanthomonas campestris. When dissolved in a solution, it makes it highly viscous, even at low concentration, and it is stable to variations in pH, temperature, and electrolytes. It is used in the food industry for jams, sauces, icings, salad dressing, and many other things. After this lecture, go look at a food label in your kitchen, especially of like a dressing. Xanthan gum also has uses in industry for explosives, textiles, paints, mortars, oil well spacer fluids, rust removers, petroleum recovery. You will even find it in pharmaceuticals and cosmetics. There are also a number of other products that derive from cell surfaces, including alginates, dextrans, celluloses, and hyaluronic acid. And these are used in the food and medical industries. The final structure to structures to examine project beyond the cell surface. One type of structure forms tubes that stick out in the environment, like a sea urchin or a burr from a plant. These are called fimbriae and pili. They deter predators, such as amoeba, from engulfing them. Fimbriae and pili also help bacteria stick to surfaces. Pili proteins are synthesized inside the cell and secreted to the outer membrane in gram-negative bacteria. A protein complex assembles the pili as it grows from the cell surface. Type 4 of the pili can assemble elongating outside the cell and disassemble retracting back into the cell. Flagella are also rooted in the cell membrane and reach out to the environment as shown in the images. Flagella are implements of motility and can be thought of as little propellers that allow the bacteria to swim through liquid. Sometimes flagella can help the bacteria to also adhere to surfaces. There can be several arrangements of flagella. In a paratrichus arrangement, flagella are distributed throughout the cell surface. Bacteria with polar flagella have one flagella at the end of the cell. In a lophotrichus arrangement, there are several flagella at one pole. Shown on the left is the arrangement of a flagella in a gram-negative bacterium. Several protein rings anchor the flagella to the cytoplasmic and outer membranes. Flagella push or pull on a cell by rotating. This rotation is powered by the movement of protons through the moat protein. This causes the moat protein to spin and it in turn spins the C and MS rings. The direction of rotation can switch between counterclockwise and clockwise rotation. Bacteria are able to respond to chemicals in their environment and adjust their motility, swimming towards an attractive compounds such as glucose and away from repelling compounds such as hydrochloric acid. As an example we we'll use of chemotaxis is E. coli, since this is the best studied system. If flagella rotation is counterclockwise, the flagella push against the cell and it swims productively in a direction we will call a run. If flagella rotate clockwise, they pull against the bacterium and cause it to tumble and change direction. The sensor of items, often the transport mole molecules and proteins, interface with the motility system using a set of taxis proteins. It is a type of primary memory when the bacterium remembers what the concentration of the compound was 200 milliseconds ago. If the concentration of an attractant is increasing, the cell extends a run that is, it is on. If the concentration of attractant is decreasing, then the cell immediately tumbles and then sets out in a new direction. This process repeats over and over. If you look at the diagram, if the cell is in a neutral environment, panel A, it will swim around randomly. However, if the cell is in the presence of an attractant, panel B, it will eventually move up the concentration gradient and stay near where the substance is present. You can also see this in capillary experiments. Note how the number of cells inside the capillary increases when an attractant is in the capillary, but decreases if there's a repellent. Flagella can be used individually for swimming, but there's also microorganisms that have a swarming motility where groups of bacteria swim together. Flagella are a common method of motility for bacteria, but is not the only one for getting around. 
Twitching motility involves the extension of a type 4 pili. Remember, we talked about that just a few slides ago. The pili will go out, it will stick to a surface, and, the, and when the pili is then retracted. As this happens, the cell gets pulled along. In this way, microorganism can move across the surface. There are also species of bacteria that can glide across the surface. Finally, microorganisms can expand across the surface simply by growing. Let's answer a number of questions. Make sure you're on track with bacterial structure. A glass capillary tube containing a chemical was placed inside a flask containing a pure culture of bacterial cells. Most cells moved away from the tube, but some cells were found inside the capillary tube. The, chemically is like, the chemical is likely A. The molecule at right is A. The molecule at right is A. The molecule at right is A. And finally, the molecule at right is A what? Let's go through the correct answers. The correct answer to 12 here is C. It is a repellent to all cells, but some cells by chance were within the tube. The correct answer here is a sugar. You can tell this because it has a hydroxyl almost on every carbon, right? It has a, a chemical formula of a carbohydrate, CH2O, and that will often denote a sugar. The molecule at right here is a nucleic acid. It has the typical base structure, a phosphate, and a sugar. The molecule right here is an amino acid. Look for that. You have the nitrogen, carbon, and then a COOH. And then finally, this is a lipid. That does it for bacterial structure. Next, we'll talk about archaea and eukarya and their structural differences.